Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and about a month ago, I shared a video where I demonstrated uh, Luminar 4's new capabilities when it comes to sky replacement. I gave you a brief overview of how the library module works and a few of the features that are built into that new software. Now, since that point, I've had a number of you that have asked me about the portrait AI portion because the other kind of main feature that's being touted in Luminar 4 is some added tools when it comes to dealing with portraits. And so now as we're getting closer to the release of Luminar 4 with it due to come out around the middle of the month of November, about a couple of weeks out, I thought that I would give you one more video here where I demonstrate how that the various portrait features work here. Now, Luminar has uh, carved out, uh, initially, they kind of carved themselves out as a software alternative to Lightroom where you could actually own the software. And of course, they needed to expand that, and so they've done that by expanding out with library module and metadata editing and all of those various things to make it more of a full Lightroom alternative. But of course, there are a number of such pieces of software on the market now. And, and so Luminar seems to be carving out a unique identity for themselves and their automation, their AI processes. And what you'll find with a lot of these AI processes is what they're doing is automating things that you could do before. If you were a, you know, a, a fairly experienced Photoshop user, you might be able to have done those things yourself manually through the use of masking and layers and um, you know, various other techniques. But what they're doing is automating those and then putting them on a slider. And so it makes it more accessible and easy for people to use. And obviously, as we're about to see, when it comes to editing portraits, the the, the learning curve of Luminar 4 is really quite easy. And so for those of you that feel really overwhelmed when you open up Photoshop, I've got good news for you. Let's take a look at Luminar 4 and its uh, portrait AI and its portrait, portrait editing tools, and we'll see that this is a much easier process. Let's take a look. Okay, in our first example here, we'll look more at the different presets. Now, Luminar comes with a lot of uh, different presets as a part of it, and of course you can download more. We're looking here specifically under the uh, portrait um, group of presets, and so as you can see, there are a variety of different looks that you can give to an image, and with all of these, of course, there is a slider that allows you to change the opacity of the preset, and so you can tune it kind of to your own specific look. So we'll just cycle through a few of these, just give you an idea of how that they impact an image. Obviously, in this case, uh, there's some blur that's been added, kind of that, you know, kind of old glamour shots type look, you know, and there's and there may be some situations where you want that. Um, the female portrait, you can see that uh, contrast levels aren't boosted as high as what they are. If we switch over to the male portrait, you can see it's a little bit more of a gritty preset. In the high key, you know, there are some places where this has kind of a fashion type application. And of course, I mean, some of these what you know they they might look better at different levels of opacity depending on what you're looking for um, the matte portrait you know kind of tweaks the tone curve and so the uh, the black levels um, sh shadow levels are raised somewhat and so then of course you have the option of of controlling how much of that that you want it's more of a tone curve tweak but all of these have different applications and then um, here we've got noir and uh, you know kind of a very specific look and then here um, the one that I'm looking at here this is smooth portrait so looking at a pixel level I mean I'm just gonna pull that slider down a little bit now, in this case, we can see that, you know, partially due to the distance of the shot being taken at and the magnification of the face, and also the fact that the model here has good skin, there's not really a whole lot of defects to address here. So we'll take a look at a different image for tweaking that. Okay, so now we have an image where we have a little bit closer access to the face here. And then once again, you know, all of your different looks, they are kind of pre-rendered down here. And so it helps you take a look at that. But what we're going to focus on now is we're going to move down to this third toolbox. And this is the portrait toolbox. Now, I'm going to zoom into a pixel level here. And so this is, you know, there's lots of pixels here. This is shot on uh, Sony a7R Mark III and a very, very high resolution. Uh, this is a Zeiss Otis 100mm f1.4. So just a fantastic 
portrait lens. But what it allows us to do is take a look at a few things. Uh, one feature that I like, one that I don't like. So the AI Skin Enhancer, um, in its kind of raw form, it needs some work. Um, what it essentially does is, yes, I'll toggle back and forth, it has removed some you know areas that identified as defects but example here on the cheek when you can see this at a close level you can see that in fact it's actually left a patch where all of the skin texture has been removed and um, you know and obviously if you pull this way over it's affected kind of skin tones in, in general and given it that kind of plasticky kind of look you know a lot of uh, smoothing which i'm not necessarily a fan of now you know using this in some moderation somewhere at a midpoint and maybe then refining the mask to where it is affecting less could be an approach here and so um you know if we just we kind of uh you know tweak that on down to where it's a little bit less apparent I think that that is a, a reasonable way to approach this, but you know, your mileage may vary, but for me, this is not an effective replacement for other tools that I have at my exposure. That being said, moving on to the portrait enhancer here, we have, uh, we've got a lot of different tools here under this uh, AI portrait enhancer, and so a lot of great options. And so, I mean, they can be anything as extreme as, you know, slimming the face down, and uh, you know you can see there at various levels um you know and so tell you what we'll do we'll uh, we'll move that over here and we'll um we'll use this tool right here so you can see the difference now i mean that's obviously an extreme example but it shows you that again these are things that you could accomplish in photoshop but with a lot of different work the same kind of thing applies to the the eyes which if you're familiar with photoshop and the pucker tool um you can that's basically what we've got here we've got a pucker tool which you know in this case is is you know kind of cartoonish but at a much lower opacity level you could end up with a you know a shot that emphasizes the eyes and makes them you know potentially more attractive depending on what you're looking for now things that i kind of like a little bit more this eye enhancer again it's it's removing a lot of the the work of masking an eye so let's just split that down the middle there and so you can see that without that, um, you know, like if I were to do in Photoshop, what I would do is I would do a little work trimming around the edge with some burning and then do some dodging inside of there. But what you're able to do here is to get that same kind of effect, basically a dodge and a burn um, done all in one shot to really bring out all of the detail in the eye. And so I find a tool like that very, very useful. The uh, eye whitening slider, you can see again, you can abuse that, but what you can do on lower opacity levels is just to brighten the eyes and to cause them to stand out more in the face. And so let's just bring that enlarge eyes down to where it's, you know, it's just very, very subtle. But what you can see here is that looking at it globally, um, you can just see you brought a lot more attention to the eyes. Now it looks a little bit more natural at this close of a distance. And so, I mean, we could actually, you know, tone everything down it will be less apparent at the, you know, the not we're at a pixel level right now, but if you were to step back and look at it this way, um, you could see that, you know, that extra bit in the eyes is going to make them kind of sparkle and stand out there. So let's jump back in here to a, a pixel level and let's do a bit more work. So um, eyebrow improving, basically what that does is kind of darkening, outlining the eyebrows to make them um, a little bit more apparent. And so obviously, you know, different applications for that. Lip, lip saturation, you can see um, it's going to help to redden up the lips or just kind of enhance their, their color. The lips redness slider actually is going to do more tinting to it. And so, you know, it has to be used in a little bit more moderation. And then lips darkening, basically what this is doing is adding some contrast in there. And so it can, you can see, we'll use the slider here, what we've done to the lips. It's just added more, uh, you know, texture to them and then also allowed them to uh, kind of stand out more. Now, in this case, teeth whitening is obviously not going to be applicable. But what we have been able to do is make some tweaks to the global image of the face and, um, and to do that in a very easy with sliders. Now here back in Lightroom, just for viewing them closely side by side, you can see that, you know, those 
tweaks to the eyes. They're subtle here in the way that we left them into the lips, but you can see we've made nice improvements here to some of those things that help them to just stand out a little bit more on a global level. And it's those minor tweaks, and of course, you're, it's all about one's editing style, but I find it's those minor tweaks that can make a big difference. Okay, so let's just take a look at one more example here. And um, in this case, you know, although our teeth are already very white, you can see how that uh, that will, you know, help them to glow to epic levels. And so, you know, depending on your subject, that might be more useful than in other times. And so, um, you know, again, tweaking the lighting of the face so that that would be useful if your shot, you know, if your your flashing on your the face was not all that great. So adding a little bit of that does help the the face to glow and illuminate a little bit. And um, you know, again, you can you can play with all of this stuff. Uh, I don't think that th that's a natural effect to me. But at low levels, you can tweak all of these things to allow them to, you know, just add those subtle improvements to the actual face, the eyes, the lips, and to give you a, you know, a, a, a look that you like better. And then, of course, you have the option of, you know, coming in and, you know, in this case, really kind of punching up the whole image adding a preset into it. And then of course, you know, beyond that, you have the ability to go into all kinds of other areas. And so in this case, if I wanted to pull up the, you know, the vibrance of this image some, you can just, you know, slide that along, add a little more saturation to it. And, um, you know, in this case, adding a little warmth to the image, I think is nice. And, uh, you know, so a little tweaks along the way can allow you to create a you know, much more pleasing portrait look in just a few steps. And, and so as you can see, the automating process allows you to do some of these things. Now, I'm not saying that every one of them is a desirable thing and certainly not a desirable thing to do to every single portrait. You still have to use some discretion in your editing process. But what I hope that I've demonstrated for you today is that Luminar 4 has done an effective job of making a lot of these techniques um, that were previously only available to those that were more advanced Photoshop users, making them available to, um, you know, ordinary people and making them far more accessible. You're going to have to decide for yourself what your own editing style is and how much of this you feel like is ethical when it comes to edits to your portrait subjects, but there certainly are a lot of tools out there. Now, I still see some room for the skin AI uh, to to further advance. I don't like the sampling that I showed you to where some of the skin texture is lost. And so I would use that a little bit more discriminately myself. Um, and so, um, but at the same time, you, you can see how that the process works. And so maybe you can make some tweaks to make it work for you as well. But if there's any area that I would like to see them further refine is to make sure that they do a better job of sampling when it comes to texture, to make sure that we don't lose texture in the process of eliminating blemishes. Um, but beyond that, I have very few critiques really here. Um, as I said, I wouldn't personally use every technique and certainly wouldn't use them all at full opacity, but I certainly see applications where this could quickly automate some processes and uh, make portraits come out. Just that extra little bit of special. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you will look in the description down below, you can find ways to order Luminar 4, 4 for yourself, and you can explore it a little bit further through the linkage down below. There's also a coupon code there. And if we use that code DUSTINHDR, it will give you a further discount on all of the various Skylum products uh, from Luminar to Aurora HDR, etc. So take a look at that. Also in that description, there is the typical linkage to follow me on social media to become a patron or to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.